My name is Alex Manovitz, and I'm really glad to be joining the Department of History at Baruch. I'm teaching modern American history and African American history, and I'm also excited to build out my classes in the history of New York City, the history of American capitalism. I think a lot of my interest in history came from non-academic and non-historical places. You know, I grew up in a family that was constantly sitting around telling stories about grandparents and great-grandparents and you know, their immigrant stories or refugee stories and all sorts of things like that. I've sort of translated a lot of that work into my own research and my own approach to history because I've got a real focus on everyday people and the experiences that they go through and how they shape their individual lives, but also what that means for our society in a more broad sense. The heart of my research in graduate school when I was getting my PhD was focused on questions of black resistance and anti-slavery politics. And through that, I found my way to Seneca Village, a black settlement built in uptown Manhattan and eventually destroyed to build Central Park in the 1850s. And one of the things that really captured my interest about Seneca Village was how little we know about it and how little so, how few sources there are available. I'm primarily interested in the ways in which African Americans fought for their own vision of freedom, what it means to be free beyond just the simple opposite of slavery in a time when New York State still had slavery, in a time where certainly the United States and much of the Atlantic world still had slavery. But it's become a really compelling project that intersects with urban history and urban development and park building and the history of real estate as well as because of all these lack of sources and the difficulty capturing the history of Seneca Village, it's become a history of how we remember the past. How do we talk about, represent in art, film, media, news, literature, children's literature, how do we represent the past today? And so, so much of my work has to do with not just history, but also historical memory. So I could tell you that you should study history or that students need history because they're gonna learn really applicable professional skills like analysis and writing and communication and how to take all these different ideas from all these different places and put them together. And that's true. And I think that matters in whatever career they go into. And I think that matters beyond that as well. I just think that's kind of a transactional answer. I think my real answer about why we should study history would be because we walk through it every day. Especially as a historian of New York City, I get to see the history I study play out in my day-to-day -day life as I move through these spaces. Why is this park here? Why is this neighborhood like that? How did this highway cut through the Bronx? Why didn't it cut through the village? All sorts of things like that um, really animate our daily lives. And I think with a real sense of history, with a real sense of historical context, we learn fundamentally to ask better questions about the world we walk in now. I want students to find themselves in the past that we study and how it impacts their lives in the present.